Thanks again for being here. You're watching The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa uh, with Sergei Oboa. And of course, we have with us Libra Sashoma, a legal expert, legal practitioner, to discuss here with us the news, what's uh, big, what's breaking, and dissect and onboard the news as it's in today's papers. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning to you, sir. Good morning and happy new year. Thanks to you. We're kicking off with stories on the Punch newspapers this morning. See so what we can quickly find over there. Uh, of course, uh, one of the big ones that you might find there is uh, on the COVID-19 directives. Uh, some states are saying that they will, of course, shun the federal government's directive. Uh, the Zamfara State Commissioner says he doesn't take orders from the PTF, but it, you know, instead takes orders from his uh, governor. Uh, if we can have the uh, punch on your screen immediately, we would, of course, get to share those stories with you. Uh, would also, of course, be going through stories on um, security. About eight and uh, 19 people have been reportedly killed in, uh, of course, an um, uh, attack by uh, bandits in the northern part of Nigeria. Um, it's a conversation that is unending and, of course, uh, never seems to be uh, ending. Um, I think, okay, we'll start with The Guardian, uh, apparently. I think we're kicking off with The Guardian first. So, yes, a revenue crisis may worsen. Um, that's uh, the lead story on The Guardian newspapers this morning. It also says here, 18 local airlines share 4 billion naira aviation intervention fund. Address insecurity and hunger to avoid revolution, Anglican bishop tells federal government. Uh, bandits abduct UN employee, students, uh, and leader in Borno State. That's also on The Guardian this morning. Um, we also have here, revenue crisis may worsen as OPEC meets amid COVID-19 vaccine uncertainties. Cartel sees mixed outlook as inventory remains high. And also stakeholders ask the federal government to hedge cuts by leveraging high prices and uninterrupted production. Those are the big ones uh, you can find on The Guardian. So I think we'll go straight to Libra Sashoma to first of all uh, talk about the you know, revenue crisis that doesn't seem to be uh, you know, getting better. It doesn't seem like we've put in the right of, made the right moves so far. Yeah, um, quite unfortunate uh, that um, we are at this um, critical stage. Um, there were times when uh, in this country we did um, boast that um, you know money was not a problem, but how to spend the money was a problem. And then um, rather than put um, enough infrastructures in place at that time, even though we tried far better than we are doing today, uh, maintenance became another big problem also. And so today, we are nowhere to be found in terms of infrastructure. Uh, today, we celebrate payment of salaries as if, uh, you know, it's a big deal, you know, to pay salaries to workers who have worked for it. And um, now, with COVID-19, and um, definitely there will be demand for oil. You know, we, we shouldn't, um, you know, but we shouldn't just focus on that, I had expected that by now, when even countries like Dubai are looking into other things, yes. yet we are still discussing oil prices, dwindling revenue from oil prices, you know, um, while other countries were shutting down for you know the second wave, and you know every radio station I tuned to, they are marketing Dubai for holidays, and you know, and then. I also, I went for that, I read, you know, and I, I kept asking myself the question, what, you know, is making the difference? Is it that there's no COVID? And I discovered that right there at the airport, even for the Dubai visa, as you're paying for the visa, you're paying for testing right there at the airport. Before you even leave the airport, you test for COVID and, you know, the results were coming out in, um, in, in their numbers. And so these are people who are serious and who wants to make money, you know, from alternative sources. Yes. But this, this year, even the roads are not good for us, the airlines we can't fly, land there's an inter intervention fund now, how far that we go, it's another problem. And, you know, even, uh, uh, even Nigerians in diaspora, you know, to, to come back for holidays, you know, it was another big problem because of the lockdown in the countries where they are in and then because of the crisis. So what that tells us is that, look, from now on, we need to begin to look at, you know, a people who can manage the government beyond oil, people who are serious-minded. We should move away from these shenanigans of, 
the APC, PDP, you know, where is he from, who is this person. We should begin to look at antecedent. What has this person done before? In terms of managing economy, in terms of fighting corruption, yeah. in terms of um, infrastructural development. Not that you build locomotive train and then you begin to celebrate in, in year 2021. Uh, let's also you know, get you to speak on the abduction of a UN uh, um, employee. It, it seems the government has continued to struggle to provide security on our highways. Um, I'm not sure why that is so difficult um, over the years. And, and of course, kidnappings seem to, of course, continue to be on the rise uh, in Nigeria today. It's the normal thing now. You know, it's so sad that even police commissioners are being kidnapped. You know, army officers are being kidnapped. Generals are being kidnapped. Nobody is, 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 um, is safe anymore. So if commissioners of states, the only thing that is remaining, governors have been attacked. So the only thing that is remaining now is that soon you will hear that a governor has been kidnapped. And we'll get into that. Uh, it, it's now become, it's now the norm that somebody is kidnapped police would tell you, uh, just play along with them, negotiate ransom. At the end of the day, we turn around to say no ransom was paid. Oh, the people have been released. Nobody's talking about the money that had been spent, that police um, officers were kidnapped, road safety officers were kidnapped, and we celebrate their release. Students were kidnapped, we celebrate their release. But one American was kidnapped on the soil of Niger, and we saw how the country came into the country, smuggled through our close borders, came here and rescued. So it means that these people are somewhere and can be reached, but we are not ready to reach them. We are not ready to fight it because it has become a big business for certain persons. And until we should begin to look beyond this government, really. This government has shown over time that they are supportive of armed banditry. Uh, uh, headsman crisis and kidnapping. And, and so there, we should begin to look beyond them. And if uh, we all now should advise ourselves to be safe. Imagine during the U time, a, I, I met with a friend in Benin and he confidently told me that they were advised by the government, governor and deputy governor, not to travel that the roads are unsafe. That That's even okay. them as governors, they know what they had to go through to be able to move around. So if at that highest level, they already know that there's nothing they can do, then every other, i, I sorry for the kidnapped workers and the, the people. They, I don't think there is anybody in Nigeria today who does not know. If you don't have a relations relation that have been kidnapped, at least you know somebody, you have a friend who has a relation that has been kidnapped, that are paid ransom, and yet we just treat it as if now it's a normal thing. It's like, you know, um, uh, what do you call it now? Breaking an entry of those days. So it, until we all collectively come together and consistently call on this government to do something, otherwise we should just look beyond them. All right. Okay, going back now to that, um question, the big issue on the Guardian newspaper, we've been talking about um, uh, revenue crisis in Nigeria. The Debt Management Office projects that the country's debt profile will be hitting 35 trillion naira, and we also see that the country's deficit is, you know, stacking up. How do you think this might affect our chances of exiting recession? Um, debt is in itself is not a bad idea. Great countries are, are, are debtors. But what you do with it is you know the problem to, 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 to borrow money is not a, a bad thing provided you put the money into you know infrastructures that will yield revenue that will enable you pay back otherwise recession we are, we are kidding ourselves even in the last administration when they rebased the economy and so we're the fastest growing economy in africa and all all of those uh, stories these are book stories what is the ordinary man on the street saying there are no jobs now, as I speak to you. People are losing their jobs. That is so fashionable now for, you know, uh, fraud to thrive. And then we have found a very fantastic name for fraud, Yahoo Yahoo. And so it's very fashionable now. And kidnapping, it's another one. Some, they've added plus, Yahoo plus. And so 
Kidnapping now, it's so fashionable. Imagine villagers who used to be farmers who can no longer go to the farm. It's easy to recruit them into this same kidnapping. Exactly. And then they make so much money. And so agriculture will no longer be lucrative. And so when I hear government talk about everybody should go into farming, farming without value added, that's processing. It's poverty. And for all of us, now that we know, the government knows that we need to borrow more, what are we borrowing to do? When we borrow, are we going to plow it into creating processes to process uh, infrastructure, to process agricultural produce? That's the right. government closed our land borders for, for almost a year, only for them to open the land border. And then now turn around to say, only God can protect the land border. <laughs> Let's quickly move to the Punch, the punch newspaper, uh, newspapers yes. this morning. The big story here on The Punch says uh, Oyo Rivers, Sokoto, and four others shun FG's directive. And uh, it's saying states disagree on federal government's January 18th resumption date. And uh, Zamfara Commissioner is saying here that they receive directives from their governor and not uh, the PTF. Um, Lewis, let's get your thoughts on this matter. We know that COVID-19 is an imminent threat. And I mean, there is one threat of a second wave of COVID-19. Some other countries are even going through a third wave of COVID-19. Some other countries experiencing a new variant, a new strain of COVID-19, which according to WHO is more transmissible than the COVID-19 we know. You know, but right now the PTFs, you know, issued a directive saying, let kids stay home till January 18th. But these other states are insisting to resume January 11th. Um, we will soon go through a third wave in the books. We are already going through a second wave in the books. And so every death now is COVID-19 related. Nobody dies of cancer these days in Nigeria. <laughs> Nobody dies of normal ailment. Every death now is COVID-19 related. And with the discordant tunes that the states are singing with the federal government, it further foils the fact that there is more to it in Nigeria than meet the eye. That's why a lot of people are saying, look, this thing is a scam. I had expected, with the first wave, you know, everybody, almost all the states complied. But with the second wave, I think there are certain things that were learned, that the states now understand that, look, we can better manage it from our levels than somebody sitting in Abuja who at least visits us anyway and just issuing directives to us. I think there should be more synergy, more collaboration. You don't sit down in Abuja and issue directly to somebody in Sokoto. If the man in Sokoto has been able to manage his crisis properly, he should, you, you, you should be able to collaborate and discuss better so that he can know when to... This, but but isn't that already resume. meant to be the system that we run? Do we run... That's what, from what you're hearing or what we're seeing now, it shows obvious that that's not the system. But on paper, that's the system. But in real time, in practice... That's not the system. And so that's why the man in Sokoto, the man in, um, um, what's the name of that, River State, and the rest can tell you, look, we don't listen to, to you in Abuja. We have our own case here, and this is the, the, the situation on ground. But then we should also ensure that this is not being politicized, you know, because the tendency for some of this, because you look at Sokoto, you look at rivers, these are PDP states, distinct from uh, the government at the center. So... What's the, 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 the crisis rate in these places? You know, how well have, been, have they been able to curtail this, um, you know, second wave? Yes, Lagos is the epicenter, but yet you say the workers should stay at home and the markets are open, you know, and then um, there are no all this social distancing. Go to the airport during, um, 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 between the Christmas and New Year. You'll be wondering if we still have uh, COVID in Nigeria. And yet, you know, so when you put all of this together in the mix, you begin to ask yourself, are we really a serious country? You know? yeah. So that's why the ordinary man on the street, seeing these things and hearing these things, without you know, government story, anytime you talk about second wave, um, especially the infrastructures that were put in place during the first wave are being destroyed by the same government, are being removed by the same government. And so yet, you're talking of second wave, second wave. I, I, I think what government should do, really, you should be sincere, should be sincere to themselves. If, because also, you remember in America, in Europe, they had expected that when COVID hits Africa, you know, we'll be falling down like um, mosquitoes, we'll be dropping dead. But for reasons best known to God, or for maybe because of the vaccines 
or because of the immunizations or because of you know other natural causes you know it didn't affect us the way they expected that does not mean that there is no covid there is it's real right. but we should also be sincere with ourselves as a government not to begin to copy and paste every rule that is applied in, in, in Europe and America. There's also one of the things on the punch this morning. It says here, we're, we have not been informed of COVID-19 offenders list um, and, uh, on a travel ban, and that's from the Nigerian Immigration Service. Yes, um, indeed. Mr. Uh, Arige, if you can recall, yesterday we are talking about this topic and about how do we really have data and do we really use this data? Because when the, when the federal government announced that they had released a list of 100 passengers that were defaulting on COVID-19 tests and, you know, all the protocols, you know, we're like, have they actually informed people in charge, like the NIS? I mean, if one of those people on that list were to travel tomorrow, would they actually be stopped? And now the, the NIS is saying they have not received any directive on that. So what, what can we say about <laughs> synergy amongst ministries and going back to the use of data? It's, it's sad. It's the same story. From states to federal government, between federal government agencies, it's the same story. Do you know now that if you're traveling to UK, once you get there, they, all they need you to do is to quarantine. All through the lockdown, British Airways was flying except countries where there are restrictions. Yeah. They were flying, they put you know, measures in place because they also know that hunger and hardship is worse than COVID-19. So they put mm -hmm. measures in place. So once you travel, once you get there, they ensure that you go into isolation for 14 days, in some cases, 21 days. And they monitor to ensure compliance. But here, yeah, we don't even have the mechanism to monitor. There were also allegations that people who went to... That in Nigeria, you can get... COVID-19 uh, results yes. for 21,000 uh, without even doing the tests, you know. So all of this, and now you saw there are people who came who didn't do the test because these tests are not done at the airports. You know, you, you, you leave the airport, you are given a form, you go somewhere, you're supposed to go somewhere to do the test. What if your travel, you're not um, domicile or resident in Lagos, and then your, your, your connecting flight away from Lagos is almost immediate or two hours connecting flight. And then you get to the center where you're supposed to do it. The crowd there, you know, with the way we do our things. Yeah. And so you're unable to do it. So you get straight to your village or to the state you're going into. You're not able to come back. And so you have all of these names who came into Nigeria, but for logistic reasons are not able to, you know. So what we should be doing, apart from this list, we should also ensure that how do we move the tests to areas that it will be easy, like, you know, Dubai is doing, to be easy to conduct these tests before you allow these people leave, you know, and the of airport. Course, you know, funny Since you do too. not have the mechanism for monitoring. Yeah, and of course, you know, wherever the test is done, you know, it should also be on the same database with uh, what the federal government has to ensure that, Indeed. you know, you, or every single person who was done we, a test. This is the only country where you donate laptops and computers to, you know, um, government agencies, and then you get there, they are covered with, uh, with tarpaulin. Where a, a deputy governor will go for computer lessons, I'll be happy to announce it, <laughs> that he's doing computer <laughs> lessons. Like, where you have laptops right in front of a secretary, but he's still using long hands to write. Let's, let's quickly just share stories from the uh, nation so we can go. We're out of time for... Yes of the press this morning. So let, we'll quickly just slide um, to the nation newspapers and see what we can find. Yes, COVID-19 spike federal government considers another lockdown. 774,000 artisans hired for public works as the program takes off. Um, also on the nation this morning, former Unilag VC Ibidakbo Bay is dead. And of course, as talking insecurity, bandits killed 19 in Kaduna community attack. Sad, really, really sad uh, story once again. Uh, CBN fixes two billion naira capital for mobile money operators, and um, I'm going to just <coughs> throw in one more. Um, Ohanez uh, poll aspirants reject push for Biozo. Uh, these are the major stories that we can find on the nation this morning. Thank you very much, uh, Libra Sushoma, for your time and My for pleasure. going through these uh, papers with us. My pleasure. All right, stay with us still on The Breakfast. We have uh, a little bit to share with you what happened today in history on the 4th of January, many, many years ago. Stay with us.